Hi, Lauren. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Mark. I'm just uh, going to look over these. Uh, you know, going to provide you with a bit of a critique. Um, okay, so I'm just going to rattle off the first thoughts that kind of on uh, off the top of my head. Um, he looks very conventional. Uh, we're not doing anything really very new here. Um, I think with the mermaid design, we can push this further. Um, current old, you know, Disney design is just dog girl with a fishtail. But I think um, maybe what we can do is we can start incorporating more uh, non-human elements into this to make this a little bit more interesting. So just prior to, you know, uh, starting up this tutorial, I was looking around, and one thing that kind of interests me is uh, our, our amphibian gills. Uh, I mean, there are these kind of frilly, there's these frilly gills. Let me see if I can load my zooming tool. Ah, here we go. Right? So you got these kinds of interesting frilled gills. There's different eyes that we can also use. So if we look at, say, you know, amphibian eyes. There's a lot more we can kind of go with. Also, you know, there's fish eyes and, and that sort of thing, um, and shark eyes, and there's just a lot more animal parts that we could be using. And you know, I can understand if you're still trying to keep her, you know, looking pretty and that kind of thing. But it's like it, it just comes down to how you how you use it. So this is only one drawing, and so I'm going to propose a bunch of different designs, and we'll just see what works. Um, it's going to take several drawings to kind of hone in on what looks good and what doesn't. So let's just look at the head, for instance. So we go with the whole amphibian gills idea. I mean, I am going to still have to draw a uh, the head structure. All right, so the gills appear to be coming from, you know, behind the jawline, right? Behind the neck. Because that's the thing, it's like she's supposed to have, you know, as as a mermaid, she's supposed to have the gills. Maybe I'll move the jawline a little bit further forward. Because that ear is looking too far back. Anyway, I'm not gonna I shouldn't worry too much about how this looks. I should just worry more about the drawing itself. Like just worry about where everything can be placed, the composition of, of the parts on, on the head. So, gills. Right, I'm just trying to think of the angle at which the gills... I can do this in several pieces. I'm going to handle it kind of like a, like a lace collar, like one of those Elizabethan lace collar. In fact, before I do that, before I just start hammering it out, I should just look at Okay, so now when I look up Elizabethan lace collars, look at all the different um, things that come up. Right? There's lots, lots of inspiration. Lots and lots of inspiration. I mean, this is the thing. The internet, where you live in the internet age, the uh, the internet age, the internet's your friend. Uh, Google Images is your friend. Um, wow. I mean, they can get pretty darn elaborate, right? So there's another one, right? Get very elaborate. So she's supposed to be, you know, the Little Mermaid, you know, some royal princess. Then let's give her, you know, a gill set, a gill collar that kind of matches that. Actually, I kind of like what I've got already because, in a way, it's almost like wings, um, right? So this is just one possibility, and you know, I'm not even going to bother drawing eyes on this for now. I'm just going to draw a series of heads. And just let's see, let's see what what we have, right? Let's see what works. I'm not ready to kind of jump on the first idea I had, even though I kind of like that first idea. So let's look at other 
possibilities. In fact, what I'll do is I'm just going to right, just look at the different kinds of shapes that we can have. And then I can modify it so that it looks more like a, you know, I find a way to stitch it into the neck. Okay, so I'm trying to just figure out how's, what's the topology of this gill collar. And then I have to make the edges a little bit more. I have to feather the edges. All right, so there's another possible design that we could have gone with. Um, and, and of course, there's also the hair, right? Her hairstyle that we're going to go with, you know, the jewelry, you know, she's got earrings. So the hairstyle that we can go with as well, it's like we have, I mean, normally if we look at, you know, Ariel from Disney's Little Mermaid. I mean, she's so iconic. The thing is that her hair is, let's, let's look at what her hair looks like. Right? So Let's see what's already been done. Actually, A R I L, and just Disney. So if we look at there. Now, underwater, you know, her hair is, you know, kind of flowing conventional. When she's out of the water, though, I'm trying to find a picture of it. No luck. No, no. Okay, so we're not very lucky. But I do know that the hair is not going to... Ah, here we are. There we go, right? Um, there's a, her hair is much more affected by gravity when she's out of the water. So, you know, we can think. You know, we can think about possibilities with what we'll do with that hair. You can you can choose to slick that hair. You know, slick it all the way down. All right, we can, and I see you've given her short hair. So you know, I'm going to play along with that. I'm going to slick all the hair down like that. All right, so this is one one possible proposal for what we can do with the hair. I can't help but think though that if we're going to go with wet hair, the best the, the one person that comes to mind is is Sadako, which is from The Ring. This, this one character that comes out of this well, she's this girl who's basically been drowned in a well. And, you know, you can see what they do with her hair, right? Like over here. So if you want, you can give her really long hair and go for the Sadako look. Right? So these are all, you know, these are all proposals. So whenever you're doing character design, don't just draw one drawing, you know. Draw two, three, four, five drawings is, you know, min is is a good start. You know, if you're not really not sure what you want, you know, draw five drawings. I'm up to four. So you can see I've just drawn the first two pieces of the hair just to show, you know, where the hair opens up. And then you'll notice that at the bot it's it's at the bottom of the hair where I I scraggle the hair a bit. 
right? But I keep everything on the top, going straight down, straight down. So now she's got Sadako hair, or um, you know, we've done I've done hair that goes straight over the face. You know, if you want to keep that hair out of the face and you still want the wet look, then we can look at things like seashells. Let's look at all the possible things you've got. Conk type shells, you've got these snail shells. There's also cowrie shells and oh that's a cone shell. Cone shells, by the way, are among one of the most poisonous species on the planet. They're very deadly. But never pick up a cone shell. <laughs> or a or a tiger cowrie for that for that matter. Right? So I look at these different shells and I get ideas, I get inspiration. So we can use that. I was saying, you know, keeping the hair out of the face, right? Then I can, right? I'm going to bunch it up behind the ear like that. We look at, say, We look at flamenco dancers. All right, they have that that rose, or they have the flower right behind the ear. Right, this is very, very traditional. Right, so this is a good place for that seashell to go. All right, and you see, I say the seashell goes there. Right? I don't draw a whole seashell. I just Now I can go in there. Now that now that I know where it is and which way it's facing, I can I, I can make the spiral, or maybe not a spiral because it starts to look a little like a dog poop. Um, let's see what else we can do. Maybe not a spiral shell. I can go with a simple clam shell, right? So in this case. Or maybe what I can do is I'll use a, a, a finer, like a finer twist cone shell. Yeah, okay, let's let's go with something which has a much. Maybe instead of um, making an angle out straight words, uh, straight, you know, straight out, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the the clip more parallel with the line of her head. There. Now I can. And of course, I need to make so that the uh, spirals get tighter and tighter toward the tip, right? Something like that. And then we can use that to secure the hair. Maybe that's too high, right? So, you know, these are all. Let's go with the simple clamshell then. The original one. So maybe I don't have five drawings. Instead, what I do is I take the same one and I erase and redraw over it multiple times, you know, until I'm satisfied with what I want. But the thing is, is at least I explored many ideas. It's about how many ideas that you're willing to explore and and choose from. Right? You can't really say whether or not something's the best idea you've ever had until, you know, you've really. Know, at least touched on them, at least attempted drawing them. I mean, this is what it means to be a designer, um, a good character designer. Good character designers do not just come up with these ideas out of nowhere. Um, maybe I should angle that that shell with the head because it's kind of popping off the sides. So I'm going to draw the disc so that it's there. Now it's properly aligned with the head. Then I can draw an axis that goes like so, and then I can. Well, let's see. That goes up there. That goes up there. 
then I can draw the lines that go up that way. Okay, good. Now I got it. All right, so there's a geometry to this seashell that I've just analyzed and have never drawn until now. So, you know, analytical skills, um, geometric an analysis, this is kind of an important skill to have. There, that is a lot more accurate than what I'd been doing earlier. And now I can begin, you know, securing the hair is now secured by this clip. And that was just the hair clip, right? So, I mean, this is what I mean by design. It's like I'm designing the hair, I'm designing the clip, I design, um, you know, design the eyes, everything I pay attention to. You know, I focus on each thing individually, I do every single part of the subject is researched and then designed. I'm just thinking of having one piece of hair that's actually kind of rogue. And kind of going over her face. And then maybe I'll have some more hair, which, which also bunches up, you know, going with the flamenco style. All right, so these are all things to consider. I could probably just also go with get a neck back in there. And let's try that fish that fish gill collar again. Maybe what I'll do is I'll draw first I'll draw, you know, some simple kind of a scale. I'm gonna divide the neck up, get some scales in there, and then maybe three scales, and I'll make it so that we have one that's smaller, then larger, and, you know, even larger. So you know what, I think a good, a good influence for that would be Swamp Thing. There's the Swamp Thing. No, that's not the one. Hmm. I'm trying to remember, there's like this giant fish creature. This is not the same thing. There was like an old horror movie creature that was... Yeah, oh well, that's what happens. You get older and your memory, does, your memory begins to fail you. But I do know that, you know, we can... Let's take the silhouette, right? Let's get a silhouette around her neck and then design parts that fit that silhouette. Maybe I'll just do two scale, not three. So, you know, it's like a kind of clothing, except it, it's actually part of her biology, right? It provides both, um, you know, it provides a nice, you know, it looks like clothing, but at the same time, it's, it, for, it has a biological function, right? So these are things that you can, that we can do with the character to make the, more, the character more interesting. I mean, we can go further than what Disney has done. I 
you know, even with the hands as well, the, the hands, the arms, these are all things that we can we can explore. Let's let's just draw over what you already have. I mean, we can we can give her longer fingers and then web them. All right, so that's a possibility. You know, if it doesn't work out, then just undo it. Don't do it. You know, like I say, try it out. Um, ah, right. Also with the arm. Here, let's let's just draw a quick arm kind of structure that I can experiment with. And once again, keeping in mind the uh, the idea of using biology as clothing, biological clothing. Right. We can you know, we can give her some sort of thin. Right. We can go with we can web various parts. And in a way, make it like a glove. Um, you know, you can go with we can go with hands that are very, um, you know, not earthling like at all, not human. I'm trying to think if there is any creature in the animal kingdom which has webbed hands and feet. Frogs, for instance. I'm actually back on Google Images. Oh, turtles, turtle hands. Right? Or alligators. How about otters? Right? So, I mean, Or maybe platypus hands. See, they have these web hands. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, look around until you find something that kind of, you know, like the internet is like this giant bucket of spare parts that you can go kind of rummaging around in to find something that works well. All right, and even if you can't find exactly what you're looking for, at least, you know, your imagination will still have something, you know, which you can kind of use. I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think of a silhouette, you know, what kind of silhouette, how large do I want that end hand to be? Do I want it to be huge? Do I want it to be small? For now, I just want to carve out a piece of space and, and make use of it. And does it look creepy? Yes, it does. You know, it probably does. Um, but what I show you next is um, going to kind of important.
mean, if you're trying to keep her looking uh, appealing, then the next trick is to do the glove thing, which is right to put a borderline. So in a way, it's almost like the human hand goes into this binned kind of arm length glove. And then it's from here on down that we're allowed to, you know, really stray from um, anatomy because we've because we've indicated this border between human and non human. And so we can give her, you know, big powerful hands and strong fingers and all that other stuff. Laws. We can make the other, you know, parts of the hand as inhuman as we want. All right, so you can think of. You can think of this this alien biology as kind of a, a thing that you wear. It's like a costume, it's, right? It's an addition. Just thinking about what else we can do. Well, for now, why don't I why don't I just try? You know, like got all these ideas out here. You know, how do you kind of stick them all together? So why don't I draw something? I'm just going to redraw this quickly. This time I'll draw. You know, I'm going to draw her butt first and use that to figure out I know she doesn't exactly have knees so I'm going to try and I'm going to draw something that looks like you know legs and feet first but then later I'll smooth it all down to make it more sinuous like a tail all right so these are Okay. Sorry, I'm concentrating. I'm not. Not many artists can actually talk while they draw. I'm not one of them. I just had a thought about her her arms. I mean, do they have to be arms? Do they have to end in hands? I mean, what we can do is, and that's the other thing is like the fact that she's coming out of the water, like that we show her out of the water. I don't, I don't know. If that's the best way to to show her in her kind of natural habitat because most of the time she spends her time underwater. So why not draw her underwater? Right, why replicate
Okay, so with the hand. All right, so like I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking that maybe what I can do is I can web. I, I can web the entire web the arms against the whole body. And let's get that seashell in there. So you'll notice how how much I'm like redrawing and undoing and redoing as I draw the hair. It's like like every single brush stroke or pen stroke, you know, I'm I'm trying to you know, to be very careful about how I place each stroke. If I don't feel it's right, then if you know if I don't feel one way or the other about it, then I'll undo it. I'll still draw, like I'm still drawing the stroke, you know. I'm not saying that that um, I treat every brush stroke as if it's my last. I just I draw it, then I undo it, and I draw it, and I do it, and I draw it, and I undo it until I find what I want. I draw the lower corner of the eye. You know, I try and figure out what where those corners right, these are the inner corners of the eye where your tear duct would be. Right. So I don't necessarily draw a whole circle like this. You know, I draw this outer corner, it's the tear duct top. You know, I'm kind of trying to find all the framing the framing of the eye. You know, eyebrows. You can give her, you know, thicker eyebrows or you have a circular eyebrows. You know, so many choices to go with. And then maybe with the eyes, you know, I was saying earlier how I would give her, I looked at things like shark eyes. There's so many forms of shark eyes as well. I mean, not all sharks, shark eyes are these, you know, big black circles. Some of them have these kinds of Right, you can do them like that. Or if you want, fine, we can go with the conventional all black dark eye. I kind of don't like the placement of them. So it's like I'm going to undo that, right? You know, undo. I'm going to move those eyes around. I think I want them lower. Maybe not so large as well. And just fill these in.
In fact, I could probably just leave out her eyebrows altogether. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like that. Then we can look at the uh, the gill collar that I designed earlier. I like them all. I like them all. I like my first one. My first one still works out. I don't know. I mean, you know, I can still do the whole mix and match thing. But you know, I'm going to get that kind of silhouette around the neck of this, of this gill collar. I am going to show the... Uh, Okay, so I'm looking at how I'm going to handle her torso. I'm just trying to get a, a nice, you know, basic silhouette in front of the torso. I want something that looks nice and smooth. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to crank the pebbles around, you know, do anything too crazy. I got to find where the shoulder is through all that gill collar. You know, I still have to, even though I have all these things, you know, I still have to find where the shoulders are through that. So I will draw. You know, through even though I know it's obscured by the gill collar, it just makes my life easier. That one line, that's the index finger. I'm just going straight for the index finger. And then maybe I'll figure out where the thumb is through all that. I'm going to give her some pretty strong looking arms because, I mean, she uses them to swim. I think we have a bit of uneven length in the arms. I'm going to have to resolve that. This one on the right is looking kind of long in comparison to the one on the left, but you know what? I think what I'll do is instead of shortening the one on the right, I'm going to lengthen the one on the left to match. I like the uh, I like the otherworldliness of it. Now, why is this eraser not erasing? There. So you'll notice that I didn't completely erase it. I just knocked it back. This is an important thing: is that whenever you're doing revisions, don't completely erase. Just knock the drawing back a bit. We're not illustrating; we're designing right now. So when you're designing. Don't completely obliterate the line unless you're really sure that you don't want it there. Because otherwise you can't 
we can't make a revision. Okay, now this one's going too long, right? So I'm going to knock it back. What, if anything, what I need to do is I need to look at the silhouette. Okay, that's better. And maybe I'm going to simplify. Right, see how much I've simplified that, right? It's like I'm not trying to draw all the bones and muscles and everything. It's just, I'm going to simplify things. Especially if you're working for animation, right? If you're going to do designs for animation, I have to be able to, to boil something down. I'm going to go with thicker arms on this. I gotta concentrate on the, the. I keep making all these mistakes as I'm talking while I draw. It's just, you know, don't you go talking while you draw. You know, cut out all, as many distractions as you can. Don't play music. Just focus. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to shut up for a bit while I figure this out. I think I'm actually going to go with short fingers, mostly because the webbing is already. Maybe what I can do is I can ripple this once. So one, one part of this is actually going to be kind of uh, loose, while the other side is going to be taut. And then another thing I should do is I should figure out kind of where the navel would be about here. Right? So I'm trying to figure out the body lines and, and where the webbing should connect on those, those body lines. Right? I need to anchor. I need to anchor this webbing to the body lines. I'm trying to think, you know, where where should these lines anchor, right? I can anchor it onto the inside of the elbow right there. I'll probably do the same for the other side. And then I'll knock back. I'll knock back the drawing and then put it back in. All right now at this point, all right, I know there's a rib cage. I know when we do our anatomy studies, there's there's a whole kind of rib cage here. We know the pelvis is here. And so we have this tendency to kind of cut into the meat, right, into, into that. I, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to cut into it. I'm going to keep it. Into, I'm not going to break that line up. I'm going to keep it smooth. That's personal choice. I don't want to, I don't want it to look too bony. And then maybe down the middle, since fish often have this kind of a keel to them. Right, they have a they have a a keel fin. Hold on, I'm back here again. All right, look at all these different fish fins we can have. The scorpion fish. All right? Look at choices. You've got this big keel fin, plus two of those smaller fins kind of right underneath there. The clownfish. Right? 
They got this ventral keel fin. I mean, right over here is where I can. I'm thinking. I'm just trying to think of a, of a kind of a thin ripple, right? So I should think about where the fin is being anchored, right? If necessary, draw grid lines to just help me understand the, the surface. And then I can kind of think of... I'm just looking... Right now, I'm just looking at my image reference and thinking about how I want that, that fin to come off, right? I can think about how I want the, t the head of the fin to come out. I can think about how I want the tail of the fin to, you know, how I want the fin to terminate, right, like that. And then I can begin bridging in between, you know, how I want the middle fin. There we go. Right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a beta fin. I'm going to look at that. So the beta spin is more like that, concave, convex in the front, concave at the back. And then I can, maybe I can curl it, right? So curl it so that it matches the shape of the body. And then you know, I can find, right? And show individual fines, and then I can subdivide and subdivide again and subdivide again and subdivide and subdivide and subdivide. This is how you get into the details, right? And then right around here on the junction, I can. Use a darken, right? So the junction is kind of going to be smooth like that, right? except I'm not going to draw it as a hard line. I'll draw it as a very soft guideline so I can kind of see you know, where I need that. Where I need that shading to go. And then on the other side, there's another junction, which is here. Because the fin doesn't just come sticking out as a soft junction, right where it's anchored. And then right up here, I'm going to do two more fins that come off like that and like that. I'm trying to think about maybe I will attach them to the collarbone. You know, I'm trying to think of There we go. All right, so I can put kind of a harder spine in there. My junction will be teardrop shape, and then there. So now I have kind of sculpting this diamond shape right here. For the two fins to come out of. And then I'll 
soften the junction. Right, then I can think about other maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll continue with the kind of beta fish tail. I don't know. Let's look, you know, it's like Every time I, you know, I can just look at how that tail kind of terminates. Like, ignore the rest of that, or ignore the rest of the tail. Like, ignore all this frilly stuff, but just look at the the meat of the fish right there. Look at that shape. It's just kind of stumpy. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to actually, if anything, I'm going to move this whole thing up. Uh, here we are. Yeah, I'm just moving the whole thing. Uh, nope, 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 nope. All right, I gotta cut and move things around. Okay, I know what. I'm not using this drawing here. I can get rid of that. You'll notice that I'm not just creating a, a blank image because I just need all this other stuff visible on my page, or you know, I can't draw inspiration from it. There. So now I've got room to go. I'm going to knock back this. All right, so I'm just doing a simple round stump, and the round stump lets me All right, does the tail always have to be ridiculously long? No, it doesn't. It's like I can go with the short tail that has So, I mean, there's there's a different mermaid for every species of fish out there. You know, the, the variations are as endless as the variations of fish. It's just the ones that look good are going to be the fish that you like most. There we go. And you can see how I've got these few guidelines, right? And I'm just kind of I'm just subdividing. Right? Then I can subdivide a second time. This is just the blend, the blend the tail. Yeah, I'm being a little lazy, right? But you know, things like around here on the hips, I can, rather than taking the hip joint and you know, kind of doing ridiculous things with it, I'm going to use the fins. Right, use the fins to expand the hips to make it, you know, make this is like when you're designing costumes. Uh, use the fabric, you know, to accentuate the body form, to flatter the body. Right, to really make that hip joint flare out or to draw attention to the hip. This is how you do it, is you just use the, uh, you know, use cloth ripples, or in this case, the fin ripple, to accentuate that, right? But the body itself, I keep, it's, you know, I keep it fairly modest. I don't, I'm not doing crazy things. I'm not giving her, you know, gigantic tits or anything like that. It's just not necessary.
no need to be Oh, right, this is also a fin. So that's, that's something I've been noticing that's kind of a problem in a lot of superhero work or comic book work, video game stuff as well, is that they're always over-sexualizing um, a lot of the characters. I mean, you know, if, if, that's, if that's the goal, if that's what your client wants, okay. But... Um, you know, I'm just saying there's there's alternatives to it, you know, and you can make things far more interesting. You can make a mermaid that is far more interesting, far more, um, I don't know, I think this is much more appealing because we're already inundated with images and, you know, Sports Illustrated and from the mainstream media that are all showing, you know, hot, sexy women, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, they all have the same body type there's not a whole lot of diversity, not a whole lot of creativity left. So this is where this is where I feel um, we can advance the art and make you know make something that hasn't been done before and make it better. Now I'm just working on the junctions between the uh, the the web, the underarm web, and there we are. Now I'm working on the junction between the between the arm and the underarm web. And maybe what we can do is we can... I'm adding spots now. All right, so I'm using large spots across the top. I'm going to draw the you know, what's underneath because it's translucent, but I'm going to darken it down so we can still see the silhouette through the uh, through the webbing. And I'm going to harden the line just so it's still visible. I'm trying to simulate this translucency of the uh, of the webbing. No, I'm not doing a great job of it, but I understand that I'm still designing. I'm not illustrating. And then I can, okay, so I had spots. The spots are going to be large at the, across the top, but they get smaller and smaller and smaller, you know, so it's like a pattern. Maybe I'll use large, I'll alternate, right? I'll use large, then smaller, then large, or wherever the, um, wherever the, body is thickest, like right there on the deltoid or right here, right? So wherever it's convex is where I tend to concentrate those dots, then I make them smaller and smaller as they move outwards. Right here as well, that's kind of another junction main, another main area where I can use it, make the spots larger. I, I kind of like how that looks working out. Same deal, I'll just be symmetrical. In fact, rather than just making them round, I'm going to, you see this? I'm, I think I'll go with a more tiger stripe look rather than spots. So, you know, it's like even in the middle of this design, in the middle of adding those spots, you know, I just, I get inspired. I see different things. And this all just comes from looking at many different animals, many different fish, many different, you know, species. And uh, up until now, I hadn't actually gone, you know, really looking at this stuff. I, it's like, it's just, these are other things which I happen to get in my images, Google Images feed. These are the other suggested images that I saw. And, you know, I just, like, I know that whenever it comes to having an assignment, you kind of enter this closed mode where it's like, well, I got to get the assignment done, and so let's just, you know, get a single plan and stick to it, you know. And so at that point, creativity has died. You know, you don't, you're not open to new things. You need to stay in the open mode. You need to, 
I mean, once you make your decision, right, fine. You know, you can enter the closed mode when you're animating. Um, you know, when it comes to the design of the creature, you're in the closed mode. But uh, with this stuff, you know, when you don't know what the creature looks like and you're still planning things out, you got to be in the open mode. you got to be able to... you got to be able to explore. All right, so you'll notice I'm using larger ellipses, you know, on these, on this point, on this point, on that point, on the deltoids, wherever it's convex. All right, so I mean, I, I did my my mistake was not using that same pattern on the the other side, on the, on her right side. So here I am scrubbing through my undos. And this is the other thing is like I'm not this time I'm not going to shade them I'm just going to outline them All right get the largest ones in first subdivide what space is left so this way I get more regular pattern spacing not so kind of haphazard and crazy. Like it's all fine and good to want to have a lot of detail, but the detail has to fit within a structure. Detail that doesn't conform to structure is just noise. Okay, now I can go and I can. All right. I can also reuse that that same stripe. Just go with two, or maybe. Two more at the, the the chin corners. <laughs> I give her, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sharks, give her shark's teeth. That's okay, I'm not going to do that. But you know, I explored the possibility. That's a thing. I guess that is sort of the, the main thing that I feel that makes me a better artist is that um, I don't care how something looks. I'm not hung up on that. I'm just, I'm still playing. I get to play around. You know, that's why it's fun. This has been you know, a, a very fun exercise for me to redesign The Little Mermaid. And uh, I think it's, it's a, it's a abs like having being able to have fun with this, being able to play, um, you know, being able to play with your designs. It's not just a reward. I mean, I think it's it's a it's a necessity. You have to. If you can't enter play, if you can't have fun while you're doing this stuff, if you hate this stuff, you'll never be able to do it for eight hours a day. It is a necessity, or you won't survive. You won't want to continue. This this drawing will be something that you'll hate. You'll come to hate, and you'll give it up because it's just so so difficult. There's so many problems that I had to solve just now. So, yeah, I, I 
I just want, I really want people to be aware that you know that you have to be open and just not care about how things are going to turn out. Just explore ideas and play with it. And okay. All right. So, I mean, it took an hour. It took an hour for a very rough drawing, hour and five minutes for a very rough drawing. Um, you know, it's by no means what I would call a beautiful, pretty, and finished drawing, but the design is fairly sound, and there was a lot of give and take, a lot of erasing and redrawing and decision making and research, and it's just, it, the stuff doesn't, you know, this stuff doesn't, what I would say, it doesn't just happen, okay? So, anyway, there you have it.